Good morning and God bless you. Today is Wednesday of the second week of Lent. And the Gospel today is from Matthew chapter 20. And I just want to read an excerpt from this part of the Gospel that follows after Jesus predicts his passion and death to his disciples. And here's what happens next. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. Jesus said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left, in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And then following after this, the other ten became indignant at this ambition of the other two. Uh, and this is what we see throughout the Gospel, this jostling for first place, you know, arguing about who's the greatest. But I want to focus on this revelation of Jesus to the disciples, that they will indeed share his chalice. They will drink of his cup of suffering. This takes us to the Garden of Gethsemane, where we see the moment when that chalice of suffering is being offered in all of its fullness, and the reaction within Jesus. There's a reaction that is very normal and natural that comes from his humanity that he shares with us. That reaction of shrinking back, that reaction of uh, wanting to avoid suffering, that's quite normal and natural. And then we see what follows when he says, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So he first says, Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. And then, not my will, but your will be done. So notice that there is the human side that he shares with us, that we recognize in, our, in ourselves when we are faced with suffering. And then there's the deeply spiritual uh, side where Jesus is so tied to the will of the Father that that is what determines his life and informs his choice. Father, take this if it be your will, but if not, your will be done. I accept. And of course, we know that the chalice was given him to drink, and he did accept it and embraced it completely with love. This is very important for us to revisit this scene in the life of Jesus, because there will always be suffering in your life and in mine that we cannot avoid that we cannot control, that we cannot at the moment alleviate. Now, if we are able to alleviate the suffering that comes our way or the suffering that we see others caring, that is part of the mission of compassion that is always part of the way of the church. But again, there are 
moments of suffering that we cannot alleviate. And what are we to do at those moments? If I'm living my life at the level of my ego and of my fallen human nature, that's when I'm living life according to my own agenda. I'm living life according to my own will, what I want. And therefore, my reaction to suffering, to disappointments, to anything that is hard, will usually be nothing more than anger or sadness, frustration or impatience. Because in a sense, I'm living only for myself. There's a kind of a self-love that is deeply rooted in that. And it's all about how things are affecting me and nothing more than that. So in order to fully understand what Jesus is talking about, we need faith to come in and transform our minds and the way to see things differently. For the Christian, our life is a life in Christ, where everything is lived unto the Lord. Everything is lived in union with the Lord. And now we see things in the light of God's will, both what God allows and permits and what God brings about, including suffering. And so like Jesus, when suffering comes that I cannot change, that I cannot avoid or alleviate, I see it as part of God's will. But in light of the Paschal mystery, we see it also as a way, as a way to share something with Jesus, as a way to encounter the Lord. And therefore, a moment to share the chalice of Jesus. And if we see it relationally in this way, and therefore in the light of the union that we have with Jesus, therefore it is now lived in the mystery of divine love, which allows us to accept and embrace such moments as part of the Paschal mystery. And so just let's just take something as simple as fatigue. As we are following Jesus each day, as we are, as we, we are responding to God's will as it comes into our life, sometimes we get weary and tired in living the mystery of sacrificial love. But that tiredness, which can be painful at times, if I cannot avoid it, I can see it in this light as part of drinking the chalice with Jesus, who himself was tired and weary at times, from carrying out the will of the Father. And I know at these moments of suffering that at the emotional level and at the uh, psycho psychological sense of the psyche, that it can seem like God is not with us. But we don't live our Christian life at that level. We live it at the level of faith. And therefore that reveals that we are united with God, that we are never alone. And so when we're walking at the level of faith, we don't need the emotions and the psychological level of the psyche to affirm that God is with us. We don't need that. Nor does that determine whether God is with us or not. We live at the level of faith at the level of grace where we are united with Jesus in that deep center 
where, the, where God indwells the Holy Trinity. And therefore we live and share with Jesus these different moments of his life. This is the beauty of our life in Christ. Jesus wants to now live all the mysteries of his life in us, to share them with us. And he wants our cooperation, our yes of love, at these moments when we're invited to drink his chalice. So I'm sure this will happen today or sometime this week where something will be painful. Let us look at it in the light of the Paschal mystery. Jesus saying, will you share my cross? Will you drink with me my chalice? Can I live this mystery now in and through you, will you consent to share this with me? So God bless us and let's pray for the grace to respond in this way and to live by the Spirit. Amen. God bless your day.